here, here today. Uh, come out and teach. Uh, and crew. Let's get these gentlemen in here. that uncle talks about all the time a lot that people just kind of i think kind of miss he's, he's really talking about transcending this style which it's not like i'm a little disgruntled sometimes with our current martial arts atmosphere that's so eclectic while i appreciate an eclectic approach to learning i think we kind of lost something like listening to you guys talk about the ei stuff when this school did it this way and that school did it that way that's the whole school of thought that's what Ryu meant yeah it was a school the different methodology mm -hmm. um not only do we have a system, I mean, we do have a very vital, you know, from start to finish system, as you well know. And I've had the privilege of learning it under him and most of other, uh, most of Uncle's other seniors, um, and get a different flavor from all of them. But it's really hard to pin down what we do sometimes because it's got such an eclectic background. I mean, there's the traditional sea lock in the Indonesian, there's the Dutch sea lock that's, they got rid of the animistic and, you know, flamboyant stuff. And then there's like, I went to high school with a, oddly enough, with a Dutch kid. And one of the other guys was a boxer. I learned to box from him. And then the Dutch kid, is, his uncle came from Holland. And next thing you know, the Dutch Rick is beating up the boxing Rick with some silos that I didn't know were silos at the time. But it's just because he just picked up a couple of tricks from his uncle. And that's often how a lot of Seelot was passed on. Just your uncle showing you a couple of tricks so you didn't get beat up on the schoolyard, you know? Then there's also family styles that are complete and entire systems. And then Uncle has on, in, on top of that all his Kung Chao stuff because of his background. So to like pigeonhole and try to categorize our art into one thing is almost impossible, which is why he can, you know, he can say we hate Ciroc. <laughs> 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 he can say that. Can say that. <laughs> but so I just wanted to, you know, um, take a second to introduce my senior, um, who I spent. And I kind of had the best of both worlds because we were both here and Guru Rich was a little bit taller than me and very analytical. Guru Philip is like the most spontaneous teacher I've ever seen. <laughs> but you know, that's we have a, an aspect of our Chinese side that we bring to our Ciroc side, and that's you know, Leitong, formless art. Well, formless art doesn't mean it's nothing. You know, it's it's putting all those pieces together in a spontaneous moment so that you're reacting from mm -hmm. But you still have all those principles in place. Like I heard a story about C.C. Chen doing Tai Chi a long time ago in front of a bunch of students, and he just started moving around, and he says, well, is that Tai Chi? And they were like, oh, yes, master, oh, yes, master. And he's like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I was just moving. There was no principle or nothing. And tai Chi without principles is not Tai Chi. You know, so when you work with Guru Philip, realize that as spontaneous as it is, it's still so deeply rooted in what we do. Look for it. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where's my dad? Where's my baby? All right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>